Hi everyone, this is Jen again. Um, if I seem a little bit off this video, I want to apologize in advance um, because, uh, to be honest, I'm not really feeling all that great, but I did want to get this video out for the viewer request that um, wanted me to go over information bars. So uh, I think that these are pretty straightforward. Um, I hope this video is helpful. Uh, but if anybody else has any tips or tricks they'd like to add, please add it in the comments below. Um, and hopefully YouTube will not like destroy your comment because you have something that looks like vaguely like coding in it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just go ahead and jump into this. Right now I have these bars displayed as a screen. Um, so in the script here, um, we're setting up the scene. I have the... Uh, bars being shown here. I just named it bars, but you can name it whatever you want. Um, here I have the screen defined. Um, so I have each one of the bars set up to be in a VBox to display the name of the bar or the information that it's trying to convey. In this case, the number of yes answers and the number of no answers, but you can use this to track attributes. Um, I have this set up, I think, it was trying to go for the most simple way possible, so I just went ahead and used variables to track the number of yeses and track the number of noes. I have um, two different examples to show how you can set this up, that um, the noes here are set up with a range of, a set range of five, and um, I have this text to display the actual numerical value, which you don't have to have. Um, I just like to have it so that the player can um, know exactly how many because when you start getting in larger numbers you can't always see the amount of bar getting increased or decreased. Um, if it was like one out of a hundred or if it was like uh, you have like 56 versus 55 out of a hundred then you're probably not really going to be able to see visually the amount of percentage of decrease and increase in the bar value. Um, so here I have another variable set for the maximum amount of the bar, and I have that range set here as well as displayed here. Um, this is just the length of the bar. Um, you can change this to Y maximum if you are doing a horizontal bar instead of a vertical bar. I'm sorry, if you're doing a vertical bar instead of a horizontal bar. I just screwed that up. Um, this is the value that is tracking or the variable that is tracking which in this case is called yes but this could be like strength or health points or whatever other attribute you want to um, track the changing value of this is the max range um, and then the scutter and thumbs are just um, like little i guess visual flourishes that you can go in and tweak at your discretion um, here I have the uh, command to increase that variable of yes for when the player chooses yes and no for when the player chooses no. So you can see when I click on the character and we start answering her that the bar populates appropriately. And I can do that for the no's as well. Now the problem that we run into with using variable containers is that um, you can see here that if I keep answering yes, I can go over the threshold, which then the bar doesn't display any increase, and that's not um, what the purpose of this bar is to be, so I can create a, um, a statement here, which is what this call statement here is after the uh, yes increase to make sure that the yes does not go over the maximum amount value of the yes. Or, and down here, the no does not go over the maximum value of the no. Let's save that. Actually, let me go ahead and disable this too, or enable that. Um, so then when I go back to this script, let me make sure that refreshed. If I answer yes again, it's going to run that little call statement that will reset that yes to the maximum value of yes. And so now we have our stuck at 5 out of 5. And you can do this also if you have the ability to dec decrease 
the variable, like if I had like strength that I could become negative, um, you might want to set a, a limit to how negative you can go as well. Um, like you probably don't want your value to go below zero. So you'll probably want to create a um, conditional for that as well. Um, if you are using object properties, um, you can do that when you're defining the object properties, uh, which is what I've done in Arcane Dicewars because um, this value here for the maximum is um, dynamic or it changes depending on the, uh, the party composition. Uh, so I could go into that a little bit as well, but I just wanted to show why um, I would choose to set a max value instead of doing a um, just manually putting it in. And it's because if I did want to change that value, like here for the, um, the nodes which don't have a variable for it, I'd have to remember to change it here and then change it here. And then I would also have to remember to change it in here. So that's a lot of places that I could forget to change it. Um, it it'll still work if I remember to change it in all those places. But if I forget to like change it somewhere, like let me say I forget to change it um, like here, then I could go in here and it's like, let me go ahead and answer no. And then I can reach um, five and I'm all filled up already because I forgot to change it in one spot. And then it could take me a while to figure out, well, where did I forget to change it? You know, depending on how many times I reference it. Uh, the disadvantage, I guess, of creating it in a variable here is that like if I go to change this here, I want to change this to 10. It is changing it in all the references for me. So like if I go here, um, I just have it at here at the variable um, max, yes. So I don't have to go in and manually change it everywhere. I just have to change it in that one spot. The problem is at least I find is if I go to refresh it here, it doesn't refresh for whatever reason. I have to um, relaunch re the project. And now it's refreshed for whatever reason. Um, I find that if I use it with the object properties and I change like the max value, then it does refresh. So um, I don't know, it could be just the way that like uh, the program loads information. Um, yeah, I don't know enough about programming to say why. <laughs> there might be a solution to that using the variable containers. Um, it gets a little bit more, I guess, uh, in depth when we want to use object properties, but I think there's a lot of advantages to it. Um, one with one being that it can be more uh, dynamic. So if I go into like um, my project that I am using uh, bars to calculate the health bars, if I go to these battle bars, you can see they basically look the same except for instead of just having a variable here, I'm referring to like an object. Um, and here I've got the current guild HP uh, out of the maximum guild HP. And those things are set. My guild. Um, here with uh, these property of HP, the HP setter is what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to have to keep it from going below zero. And then I've created these functions. So for whatever reason, I guess is how um, attributes like update when you're trying to run the program, if you want it to update while the program is running, I guess, you have to have this property set 
to return self. And then you also have to create these functions to use that to change the value. Um, if you just try to do like a Python command of like, I don't know, <laughs> um, you know, in this case it'll be like guild um, HP minus like minus equal one or something. Um, it's not going to update without uh, doing all this for whatever reason. And maybe somebody who's like more um, knowledgeable about programming can explain why. Uh, I don't really have the words for it. <laughs> At least not right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, there is a few. This is the, the extra steps I found that you have to do in order to, um, to get that to update. Um, but at least now I have the ability to um, make that current HP and max HP dependent on, uh, I can make that dependent on um, how, what units the player has deployed or what kind of inputs the player has made. Um, so there's a lot of advantages of going this route if you are doing something like an RPG where you have like um, different deployable units or something. Okay, I think I've um, stuck my foot in my mouth enough for today. Uh, if anybody has any questions or suggestions they want to add, uh, please write that in the comments. I am going to just post a little video of um, some of my progress on Arcane Dice Wars uh, because I'm pretty happy with um, being able to condense the scripts a little bit allowed me to go in and add a few um, visual flourishes that I had kind of always wanted to do but I just didn't get around to because the, the scripts are just kind of like long and out of control and <laughs> I got sort of like lost in them that I just moved on. Um, so some of like the little visual um, information I had wanted to put there, but it just seemed kind of like overwhelming to try to figure out how to do it at the time. Um, so I think I'm finally kind of getting my um, battle presentation closer to where I want it to be, and so I'm just going to throw that video at the end if anybody who might be interested. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. Uh, take care, and don't forget to enjoy the process. Bye! Let's roll! You dare face me. Double bonus. Double bonus. Surrender now. Whoa, lucky. Fools should know their place.